Oh, something's changing. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, my name is Maria Dismondi, and we are interviewing Barb Drozdowicz today, and we are just hoping she will pop back in here. We had a little technical yeah. difficulty, so I am going to go ahead and get started here. Um, again, my name is Maria Dismondi, and I am a children's book publisher. Um, the company that I run is called Cardinal Rule Press, and we are dedicated to publishing children's books that empower individual children to have social tools so that when they are adults, they go into the world with a really great set of tools that they can handle difficult situations. Now, I will tell you that I was in the industry for a decade, and um, I have found that being an author is a fantastic, wonderful thing. But in order to sell books as an author, you have to put in the work in marketing. And so when I um, changed hats, when I switched hats over to being a um, publisher, I decided I was going to be a publisher who really shared my knowledge of marketing of, in the industry. I was going to share my knowledge. I was going to reach out to different experts and have them share their knowledge because marketing is key to selling books. And the reason I say that is because in order for people to know that your book is out there, they have to have heard about your book. And marketing can be done a couple different ways. Marketing can be done one way, which is pretty, pretty. Um, salesy, right? Uh, one way for marketing is to sell, sell, sell. And that to me doesn't feel authentic. So I believe in creative marketing and, and um, being a giver. And so if you've been following along with this series, we have found, and um, Mandy, I know you're out there. If you can check to see um, if Barb is has messaged us in Cardinal Rule Press, that would be helpful because I seem to have lost her um, connection, but I'm trying to get back with Barb here. Let's see. Um, yeah, so I am I am very dedicated to reaching out and to sharing with you creative marketing strategies. So if you're new to the series, I want you to go back. I think this might be our seventh or our eighth interview. So we have heard from people across creative marketing who ta have talked about public speaking. We've heard people talk about um, Instagram last week was all things Instagram. We have people talking about like if you're an author and you're really hesitant to getting into marketing, where how do you begin? How do you start? Um, that was an interview with Ben. Um, we have had other interviews. So go ahead and go back and check out all those interviews. And I am just going to make sure I want to tell you a little bit about Barb um, while we try to get her on again here. Um, Barb is an author, so she has written several books. And um, her newest book has actually, two of her newest books have just come out two weeks ago. And so I'm gonna tell you about those. If you're interested in self-publishing, um, Barb had a book come out on how to self-publish. So I will go ahead. Mandy, if you're listening, you can maybe head over to Amazon and look up how to self-publish a book by Barb Drozdowicz. And if you could put a link to her book Below, that would be super helpful. But Barb is also dedicated to working with um, working with authors on how to manage social media and marketing. So, hmm. Barb, I see you're in the picture. You're there. I just can't hear you. Can you hear me? Let me read. I have just spent um, about three minutes talking about you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. We're back. Okay, good. I love you. Back? We're back. Yay. So, <laughs> I gave an introduction um, as to yeah. who you are. I talked about your new books that have come out. But I would like you to, to finish up and tell us how you got started in this industry. Okay, I actually heard everything that you said and you were saying, I can't see you and I'm like right here. <laughs> uh, 
so anyways, a whole bunch of years ago when I had little kids that napped and I didn't have anything to do during the nap time, I decided to take my love of books and create a book blog. Actually, somebody challenged me to do that. And, um, you know, really, I thought, well, how difficult can it be? I came from a background of teaching science and technical training. So, I mean, this clearly had to be an easy thing, and it wasn't. Um, now, mind you, technology has changed. This is back in about 2010, so it was a bit different. But it sort of gave me this escape um, to talk about books and to share my thoughts on the books that I read. I read mostly romance, and my husband just, mm, you know, like he looks at the cover. And anyways, um, what I realized is there is a world out there um, that is interested in the things that I want to talk about. And I, I started slowly, I gradually figured things out, and I grew my book blog and was really interconnected with the book blogging world and people from every country. It just amazed me to find where my audience was. Um, so because I was quite technical, I ended up sort of fixing things. Oh, Barb, can you do this? Can you do that? And things that were quite... Um, straightforward to me were um, challenging for other people. And then one day somebody said to me, I'm going to send you an author and you need to fix her website and you need to charge her. And I thought, oh, well, okay, I, I can do that, I think. Um, I mean, I could fix the website, but it never occurred to me to charge people. So that sort of started in on a different direction. Um, I'm quite good at explaining things, taking things that are complicated. I mean, I taught science, right? So I can take complicated things, break them down into little pieces that are understandable. And I like using non-technical terms. So we it. talk about the thingy, right? You know, or the, that doohickey over there. We don't, I don't use technical terms. Um, most authors from my experience are highly creative, way more creative than I can ever hope to be. But they they don't really grasp the technical mm -hmm. and so whereas they can create an awesome story that i love to lose myself in um just the idea of dealing with the technical sends them into hives right it's just this i can't do that and the reality is is they can if they're shown how to do things and if it's broken down into bits and pieces so that it's not nearly as intimidating anymore. Following along that vein, what I find is that a lot of authors will um, follow the instruction of somebody else, usually somebody who is loud and acts like they know what they're talking about, and do things that make absolutely no sense from a technical, technical standpoint. But they don't know any better, right? They're following instructions that have worked for somebody else or you know, yet various different um, explanations. And so I like getting hold of those authors and taking the, what the information that they have, breaking it down, helping them understand what they're doing, the effects of what they're doing, and the directions that they can move towards in like right in the direction of. I mean, just on a very basic level, the way you talk to a child is not the same way that you would talk to a senior. Mm -hmm. So the way you communicate to different audiences, where different audiences are, is different for different genres, different subject matter, and one doesn't apply to the rest. I love How this because you truly, you are truly making it so that Authors can do what they need to do in a very, very calming, subtle way so that they don't feel yeah. overwhelmed. Yeah. And I think that authors need to decide. I mean, my big thing is there's 24 hours in a day. If there was 28, I could conquer the world, but there isn't 28. So we have to deal with 24. Out of those 24, you, writers have to write. Mm -hmm. They have to make meals, likely um, get dressed and shower and associate with their family and you know walk the dog perhaps that doesn't leave a lot of space and so you need to decide what you're going to do with the time that is left and my big thing is 
make intelligent decisions and use your time as wisely as possible. Don't fritter away. I mean, let's say you have an hour a day to spend on, I mean, let's call it marketing. I usually call it communicating with readers. Mm. So let's say there's an hour. Okay, so with that hour, how are you going to spend that hour? And and looking at the results, is it a logical use of your time? Most of the author th authors that I work with or that I have seen, you know, trying various different things, don't truly understand how to analyze whether what they're doing is having any effect whatsoever. So they just keep following on what somebody else told them to do. Mm. So let's get into like a really, I love where you're going. Can okay. you give us a solid example? So let's say you consulted with author A and they were posting, I don't know what example you want to share with us, but let's go for like a really solid example of what you mean by an author doing something. How can they analyze what they're doing to then make changes for the better? Okay, so let's talk about posting on Twitter. Perfect. So posting, um, you know, using various tools that have tweets going out on a measured space. There's all kinds of tools that will allow you to do that. Um, a, a lot of the comments that I get are, um, I need, well, uh, there's a number of things. I need tweets to appear every hour, 24 hours a day, because my audience will need to see it when they log on. And the second thing I get is the more that I tweet, the more likely it is to be found. Okay, so one of the things that I try to help people understand with respect to Twitter is just because the tweet goes out, first of all, doesn't mean that it's going to be seen. So mm -hmm. even the people that try to um, look at the stats or the, you know, on Facebook, it's called insight and, and right settings on Twitter, right? There's various different things that they have access to. Um, they'll say, oh, I had um, 20,000 impressions today on my tweets. So an impression is that it just happened to be added to somebody's timeline and they might have seen it. So what I do is I take my phone and I say, picture a teenager, one the phone in one hand, hip cocked, and they're doing this. Mm, so that's an impression, whether they read it or not. Yeah, it flies by. So, I mean, the first clue to get from that is make sure your tweets are vis vis visibly attractive, right? Make sure there's because the 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 tweet is there doesn't necessarily mean that somebody actually saw it and interacted with it. So we want people on Twitter to click on links, to uh, retweet, to respond, to do whatever they can to show some sort of info or some sort of attachment. Engagement, right? Engagement. Um, I mean, often, people get impressions mixed up with interaction because they're both I words. So we want people to interact with them or we want people to engage with them. The thing with Twitter is that they don't very easily let us know if a tweet that says buy my book with an attractive picture and a link to Amazon was actually clicked on and if it was clicked on if they bought the book. Mm. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. So what I try and encourage people to do is put out attractive information and talk to the readers. One of the quotes that I really like um, is by Eli Fennell, and it says, the key to um, social media is being social. And then there's, an, <laughs> you like that? There's I another do. one. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, there's another one by Pat Flynn, and many people don't, um, in the author world, don't know who Pat Flynn is, but he's a major blogger in the blogosphere. And he has a quote that says, selling to, to people through social media is like going to a party, meeting someone for the first time, and then saying, hey, do you wanna buy this Tupperware? Yeah. 
right? Mm-hmm. So it's the in- whole like old school sales model, which is you don't approach a cold client. You have to warm the client up. You have to nurture them. And part of that on social media is what you're saying is communicating, connecting, engaging with your audience. So, yeah. which I think is very important. So on Twitter, that would be your suggestion is to go in and to look at not just the impressions, but you're actually looking at the, what did you call it? The interactions. The interaction. And and I think that what I often suggest is look at what is happening with all of the tweets that you send out. What people don't realize is that Twitter is a giant search engine. So by adding a hashtag, that makes your tweet a searchable item. So if somebody goes onto Twitter and says, I want to find out about historical romance, which is the what I read. So they would search hashtag historical romance, or they could search hashtag historical romance. That's that's how a reader would look. I mean, not that I necessarily think that a reader looks for their next read on Twitter, however, but they could find more information about historical romance. And it's not hard to add hashtags. There are even not. like um, free tools that you can use that will help you generate hashtags. So yeah. putting the hashtags on are going to help you. And yeah. Barb, so if your clients are spending maybe like once a week taking a look at the insights, the analytics on their Twitter, on their Facebook, on their Instagram, mm-hmm. then the following week, what you want them to do is, okay, well, gosh, my engagement, my um, interactions went down. So what changes can I make in the next week? So I'm actually you know, connecting with my readers a little bit more. So you might want to look to see on Twitter if, you know, your um, if you have a post with a picture is being engaged with a little bit more than a regular tweet or a tweet with a uh, link is being engaged more than a regular tweet and then replicate what's working, correct? Yeah, exactly. And, and my attitude towards social media is to engage with readers, to inform them, to share information with them. You can do that in a variety of different ways. I mean, you can do things like put a quote from a review on a graphic with the cover of your book and share it without a link. Because one of the things that we run into on Twitter and not really Facebook, but Twitter is there's rules that we have to abide by. So if you put um, all of your tweets out with links, then you're breaking one of Twitter's rules and okay. um, they'll object to that. The other thing that I suggest is that you drive people or, or not necessarily drive, but you encourage people to go to platforms you have more control over. Mm-hmm. So for example, if you're wanting to share information about a book that's on sale, people are capable of buying books, right? We've all done it. So if a person sees a book that they're interested in, you don't necessarily have to offer them a link, a direct link to the book. You can you can put in the graphic that it's available on Amazon. All right, they'll figure it out. Yeah. We buy books every day. Um, you want to send people in the direction of platforms you have more control over. So to give you an example, if I look at stats, um, Let's take, for example, um, a friend of mine that has a really, really solid social media platform. Right? She's very um, active on Twitter, very active on Facebook, very active on, integra- on Instagram. So if I look at the engagement across various um, things that have been put in place over the space of a week, um, and I actually did this, and she had 67 engagements over a week. There was a lot of information that went out and there was a lot of impressions, but that was the engagement. When I look at the stats on her blog, she had over 800 hits on her blog. Okay, so Mm -hmm. if if we go back to that hour, right? If if all you have to spend is an hour, why are you spending it on Twitter? Why not take that that hour? and spend a little bit of time on Twitter and focus more on platforms where the numbers tell you that there is more engagement or more traffic. Um, If we look at another example, um, if you send out a newsletter, you should have uh, an open rate somewhere in the range of about 60%. So 50 to 60%. So 
if you send out, and math is my, not my strong point, if you send out a, a newsletter to um, 100 people and 60 open, that's 60 results. That's 60 or, um, engagements or interactions. That's more than you're getting on Twitter. That's more than you're getting on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And that's more that you're getting on Instagram. So not that you should not be on the various social media, but perhaps look at tools and automate your time on um, social media so that the amount of time that you're spending on social media is perhaps 10 minutes and the amount of time that you're spending on perhaps a blog or a newsletter is 50 minutes so that you're fantastic so that you're making your time more proportional right you're not spending large amounts of time on stuff that gets you nothing you're you're mm -hmm. automating the stuff that for the most part gets you nothing and you're spending your time on on something that gets you something does that make sense it's fantastic. I liked how you brought in numbers because I like the numbers to really compare things. Mm -hmm. So Barb, do you take on clients currently? Do you take on authors now? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, in, okay. in bits and pieces, often what I, um, I, I sort of focus on two ends. So I focus on the beginners to get them started and help them understand where an audience is, um, how to interact with an audience, how to automate various things, how to set up and, and sort of move forward. And then I also like working with the experienced authors on strategy, on um, sort of manipulating Amazon for lack of a better direction or description. So how do you take what you have and apply it to you know, Amazon ads, how do you change the blurb? How do you add categories? How do you, you know, those sorts of things. Because it's different levels of um, challenge for myself. Fantastic, because I know a lot of people who, we get a, a lot on the replays, so a lot of people will be tuning in thinking, I want her to do that for me, so I want to make sure. Yeah, no. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the things that, that I don't do is I don't do the social media. There are That's people me. that do mm -hmm. that. What I do is I teach a lot of the tools. I mean, I've blogged about a lot of the various tools. There are a huge amount of tools out there that are um, quite straightforward to use and um, help people understand why you want subscribers to a newsletter, why you want subscribers to a blog, why you, how to grow the blog audience, how to, you know, these. The yeah. And also my big thing is understand what genre you're writing, where your audience is, and where it is or isn't on social media. So, I mean, as you said, you had somebody on talking about Instagram, and Instagram is huge with the younger set. I mean, I have a 15-year-old that is has surgically implanted um, Instagram into her hip, I think. Um, her life would cease. And she's very, very responsive to anything that comes across Instagram, contests, um, giveaways, um, all this sort of information. But that is not the audience of everyone. No. Mm -mm. And for, for my other platform, for my writing platform, I write children's books, where I did in the past before publishing, and I spend a lot of time on Instagram because that's where educators are, and that's who I'm connecting with. So, Barb, this has been amazing. I want to try to keep to our time, to respect okay. everyone's time. But this, you are a wealth of knowledge. And I actually want to send people over to your blog as well, because it sounds like you have a lot of content there that would be helpful to others. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if, if you wouldn't mind, um, after we sign off, maybe putting a link to your blog in the comments yeah. below, that would be super helpful. And I thank yeah. you for being a... Um, supporter of authors and for being a voice of reason so that we're not wasting our time. Because mm -hmm. like you said, there are 24 hours in a day. And if you have one to spend, let's do it wisely. Where should you be? Mm -hmm. What should you be doing? Yeah, yeah. perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Barb. Oh, you're welcome. Nice and chatting. We'll the, yeah. And we'll put the link to your books too, because you've written, like you said, you've written too many books. And I just love yeah. that. <laughs> Every time I read a book, I say, okay, that's it. I'm not doing any more. <laughs> so check out our books too, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay, bye-bye.